with our busy work schedule, we make it a point to come to Full Cup because um, we're there just in case, you know, God puts it on our heart to share the gospel or um, if God convicts us to counsel somebody in need. Um, so that's why we make it a point to come to Full Cup, it's just for the sake of the gospel. With a busy work schedule, yeah, it's busy. It um, takes up a lot of your time. But um, with Full Cup, it's something that I would look forward to, not something as a task. Like, I don't have to put in effort to go there. I want to go there. For me, being a student and being uh, and having a job, I mean, it's very difficult to get that time off because, you know, um, it conflicts with my schedule, you know, and I have to ask, like, my manager about, you know, can I get this time off, you know, because I really do want to attend full cup. But, you know, by God's grace, he just, you know, he lets me have that time off when I do ask my managers. Just the encouragement that I get from uh, other believers. When you meet other believers who are going through the same circumstances as you, the same um, difficulties and sin problems and uh, circumstances, um, and just uh, fellowshipping with them, it's a really good encouragement to keep following Christ. Uh, what I expect and anticipate that we in El Toro uh, would that we would start up a hunger um, hopefully something that will stir up the saints you know something to encourage our brothers and sisters because um, I just pray that full cup would just be a big encouragement to um, to remind our brothers and sisters of the gospel of Christ and uh, just the hunger and that they need you know for his grace Something that I can take home from Full Cup, hopefully I pray that it's a testimony that we serve the body, that we serve the church, and uh, also a testimony of people coming to know Christ, you know, um, just that we have a reason to celebrate, you know, us coming home, that, you know, souls have been saved by Christ and uh, by the gospel. For one, they, they would gain gain the truth. Um, the benefit of having the Q&A the way we do it is you come with any question you got. You, you have something that's controversial, there's something you think is contradictory in the Bible, you come and you have you know, pastors here or other people who have been studying the Word, and you just ask them a question. And uh, it's a safe environment to do that. Um, and that's when they open the Bible and they tell you this is what the Bible says about this issue. Um, even on the things that the Bible isn't clear, black and white about, um, they can present you with principles of different scriptures in order to try to answer the question the best that they can. And, um, you know, that's one of our focus is to uh, put emphasis on what the Word of God says. And so that would, that would be the biggest thing that they can gain from it is just the truth, the unadulterated, unchanged truth the way it is. It's important because um, the the Bible actually tells us to uh, not neglect the gathering of the saints, so it commands us to fellowship with one another, and um, it's important because you know it helps us encourage each other, um, it helps us stir each other up when uh, uh, when we need to be stirred up. Um, it's also um, admonish each other if we need to. A fellowship is important because um, uh, when one brother or sister in Christ is um, suffering, we all suffer together. Um, um, and it's good to be there to correct each other, um, to strengthen each other in, uh, um, in Scripture. Um, fellowship is important because um, in Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. And Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, 
not neglecting to meet, meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So, I mean, as scripture clearly says, it's really important to fellowship with the saints and um, to stir one another up, you know, to remind each other um, of Christ. And just as the body of Christ, you know, continuing to work for the gospel. Why is fellowship important? Fellowship is essential to the believer's life. I mean, we're interdependent creatures. We're not independent. Um, we were dependent on God and we depend on each other. We need each other. Um, we, can't, we can't do this life on our own. We can't live the Christian life on our own. The Bible says that two are better than one. For if one falls, the other one is there to pick him up. But if the one falls by himself, who's there to pick him up? And so we need to be in fellowship with one another because um, there's, there's pressure coming from all sides. And unless we have that fellowship where we can strengthen each other, encourage each other, admonish one another if we need to do that, or um, minister to one another, provide for someone something that they need. Um, it, I mean, the church, it's a body. And the body, as one whole, as a church of Christ, needs to work together in order to, to do the work of the Lord. So, so we need that fellowship. You know, if one of the party, one of the body parts is hurting, then the other body parts come and they help that, that body part come up. And so the fellowship is so important. Uh, yes, I have performed. Um, it was a, a last minute thing. Um, I wasn't planning on performing. Oh, I danced. Um, I danced to a song called How He Loves Us, and it was performed by one of our friends named Marlon and Greg. Um, it was it was a last minute performance. Um, it was not planned or anything, but um, at that time it was it was our our second full cup. So we would, we didn't have a lot of performance planned uh, to perform, and um, our pastor uh, came up to me and just asked me if I wanted to do something. And you know, at first I said no, and then after praying about it throughout the event, I got convicted. And you know, I was like, why, why, why am I scared? You know, if I'm doing it for your glory. So I prayed about it and got convicted, and yeah, I just did it. And um, it was, it was a great experience because I just fully relied on the, the Holy Spirit to just lead me, have uh, Him uh, do what He wants to do, and me just following. Um, and after a performance, um, a few people came up to me, and uh, they were dancers too, so it, it, it created a, an opportunity for me to talk to them and share the gospel. And, uh, and the, I, later that night, one of them, or two of them, I think, uh, ended up uh, accepting the Lord, and uh, yeah, she's come to Hawaii. Before I accepted Christ in my life, I felt like I had no purpose. My life was living for myself. I was very selfish and mean to my loved ones. To me, life was all about seeking the truth, but I was seeking the truth in all the wrong places. I was into conspiracy theories and researching different religions, but nothing satisfied. I hated Christians, and I had a distorted view of who Jesus Christ was. I finally gave my life to Christ at an event where Christians were gathering with one another to share their testimonies and their love for Christ, and it made me want to get to know who this God was. The Lord revealed Himself to me through my prayers. Sometimes I didn't know what to pray for, but he showed me the love he had for me through his grace. I've never been the same. I realized that my purpose is to serve and glorify the Lord on earth until he takes me home.
Yeah, about two years ago, um, our leadership team, we saw a trend in the church, uh, in our church and in so many other churches. And, uh, the, the trend was that we saw that the college age group, uh, 18 to 35, was missing in our church. They were here when they were in high school and youth, but once they left, they wouldn't come back or they would be um, lost to the, to the world. And we felt a burden to really reach out to them. And so our leadership team got together and we thought of some things that they had in common. And we found that it was music, food, and hanging out. And so we used these three things and we, we put the gospel in there. And Full Cup was born. Uh, Full Cup is a cafe-like environment where uh, college and career uh, Christians can come and, and, and sing songs to the Lord and give testimony to the Lord and yet um, be in a very uh, comfortable environment. And we felt, we, uh, we saw that through this full cup, um, the gospel was spread uh, uh, to the age group. And also, um, those who were believers uh, were encouraged and strengthened in their faith by hearing the testimony of other um, Christians their age, and also uh, fellowships were formed and friendships were formed, and it created a, um, a wonderful and beautiful atmosphere of what a body of Christ is. And um, through Full Cup, uh, we saw the Lord use it for His glory and His kingdom and to share the gospel. And as you heard uh, the testimonies earlier, uh, it just has been a real blessing, and God has used it. And we hope that when we go there, we can share this, um, this full cup with you. And we pray that it will, will be a blessing to you as well.